Welcome to this instalment of the QTS Maths Demo Series brought to you by GNA Numerical. This video focuses on box and whisker plots, which are sometimes just called box plots. So here is a typical question. A maths teacher used a box and whisker diagram to monitor the performance of his class in a series of tests. The box and whisker diagram below shows the performance of the class in four successive tests. Your job is to click on the label for the test in which three quarters of the class achieved 55% or more. Okay, so before we try and tackle this question, let's discuss what a box plot actually is. So a box plot is essentially a five point graphical summary and gives you five pieces of information. So number one is it tells you the maximum value, which is the upper whisker, and it tells you the minimum, which is the lower whisker. It tells you something called the, the median, which is the white line here, it sounds like medium, and that's the middle ranking value. So if you ordered all the scores in test one from smallest to biggest, the middle one would be the white line here. So although you don't see the individual scores because it is a summary diagram, by definition, we know that 50% of the scores will lie on this white line or above and 50% will lie on the white line and below. If you're okay with that definition, then the quartiles should be okay for you as well. So this one is called the upper quartile and this one is the lower quartile and the clue is in the name. So we've got essentially four quarters is what the data has been split up into. So here's 25% of the data. The next 25% is from the top of the box and to the median. And then you have another 25% from the median to the lower quartile and then finally the bottom quartile. So using that information, we can now tackle the question. So we have to click on just one of these answers to say which test do three quarters of the pupils achieve 55% or more. So the area we're, we're looking for is actually uh, the lower quartile and above because that's from here to here is 25%, another 25%, another 25%. So that's, that's three quarters of the class, which is 75%. So we just have to scan along the tests until we find where the bottom of the box hits 55% and that is on test 4. If you don't like those definitions, you can always guess. Never leave a question blank and if you had to guess this one, I'd look at the number that they're interested in, 55. I'd scan that and see where does that intersect one of those five um, key summaries. So it doesn't really intersect anything on this one doesn't do anything here or here. Oh look, it's hit this, this point here. So my guess, even if I didn't know any definitions of quartiles and medians, my guess on this one would be test four anyway. You can also be asked about trend information with box plots. Um, and this is an example question of that. So it's the same setup as the previous question, except that now you're asked uh, the teacher expects the trend of improvement in the median percentage mark to continue in a fifth test. What median percentage mark will he expect in test five? OK, so you're just looking at the general pattern here. So, OK, the median, remember, is the white line. And pretty much they'll always have it as, the, as a white line in, in this test. So here it goes up by one, one notch, goes up by one again and one line again. So if it were to go to a fifth test, which we, we don't have that information, we'd probably expect it to go up by one again. And if it did, then that score would be 64, because here is 60, 62, 64 is there. A very common type of question with box plots and some of the other questions are questions of the order of indicate all the true statements where they're asking you three separate questions and you have to get all of them right in order to get the point. So let's see what we've got here. So test one, does it have the smallest range of marks? Now the range is just simply the difference between the highest score and the lowest score. Now we don't have to worry ourselves of working out exactly what the difference is. For this, we can just look at it by eye and say, well, okay, look at test one, Test two and three definitely have a bigger range than test one. 
but test four is quite similar so we have to check that one a little bit more carefully so if we look at the, the smallest mark in test A and test B, uh, sorry, test four, you can see four, the minimum mark is one notch higher. And the highest mark is actually one and a half notches higher. So that means that test one does have the smallest range of marks. So as we think that's true, we're gonna, gonna just color that in and that's us saying that, yep, that's true. For part two, the highest mark was achieved in test two. So we're just looking at test two. Is the top whisker higher than all the others? Yes, it is. So that one was relatively easy. We say yes to that. Finally, in test four, the lowest mark was it 44%. So it's only talking about test four. So we're going to ignore all these other ones. Test four, the lowest mark was it 44? Uh, so here's 40, 42, 44, 46. So note that one's not correct and we just leave that one as it is, and that's us answered the question. Thanks for watching this video. For more information, please visit our e-learning site or follow us on Twitter and Facebook. We'd also love to hear your comments about this video and others in the series.